you know, they've been told, you know, constantly, you know, your son's not going to amount to much, you know, he may not live long, you, he's going to be isolated, and you're going to be, you're going to have to take care of him your whole life. It's uncharted territory. We didn't understand because no one's done anything like this before. He's operating at a very high level in his limited state, and he's accomplishing things that they said was impossible. Great job, Chris. Great job. And show him what you can do. Chris Nikish is said to endure one of the hardest physical and mental challenges a human could experience. But before this, Chris comes face to face with a different opponent, the morning. I know, I know. Good morning, baby. Want a sip of coffee? We started uh, about three years ago with just the idea to do something to get him in shape. He had just come off of four major ear surgeries, about two years of being very sedentary, got really out of shape, gained a lot of weight, and was headed in the wrong direction uh, at that point. And doing a triathlon was just a way to get involved with a group of people, have some fun, and get in shape. Chris's training has brought him on the brink of history. He'll soon become the first person with Down syndrome to race in and complete an Ironman. Where are we going after Ironman? Nightclub. Nightclub? Who's going to be at the nightclub? The blondes. The blondes? How many? A lot. A lot. <laughs> Today, Chris embarks on an eight-hour training day, riding 100 miles on bike, followed by four miles on foot, just a portion of the 2.4-mile swim, 112-mile bike ride, and the 26-mile marathon he will have to complete in 17 hours on November 7th. Come on. The training has been uh, difficult at times because there is no manual. We can't ask the other family that has a Down syndrome child, like, how did he react to an open water swim? Or how do you properly you know, manage him on a 100-mile bike ride? There's no, there's no manual for that. There's no system for that. There's no expert to ask. It's just annoying because um, they don't know what to say. And um, I told them, you cannot tell me what can I do, what can I do. Chris began his triathlon journey more than a year ago, finishing last place in the state championships for Special Olympics. Rather than letting this discourage him, Chris and his dad Nick adopted the 1% better philosophy, pledging to do just a little more than the day before every day. And what do we do? We get 1% what? Uh, we get 1% better every day, right? He started by being able to do a lap in a pool, which was really hard for him at the very beginning. He couldn't do a full lap in a pool. But we focused on just getting 1% better. And so it's just been a journey of a couple of years where we started close to zero and just focused on doing a little bit more each day, one more push-up, one more sit-up, one more lap in a pool. And now he does 100 miles. And Nick hopes this effort will help Chris be more included, especially within the community. Awesome. I'm so proud of but you. The person who gave you. Look, just six, seven, eight months ago before COVID, when we would go to the gym, um, you know, the, the guys would play full pickup basketball. He loves basketball, but they wouldn't include him. Um, you know, wherever he was, he wasn't included. He would never get invited to a party. Uh, he just wasn't part of the community. So what it means to me is that this little bit of effort that he's putting in to get better, he's able to be included in the community. He had just had the best birthday party of his life uh, because he's part of a community now. They threw a party for him and 40, 50 people showed up in the middle of a, of a pandemic. best birthday party Chris has ever had. And it's because of inclusion. The number one mission of this whole thing is inclusion. It's for him to be part of the community, be part of the, the family, and be part of, you know, the things you guys have and, and experience every day that our kids just don't. And so this is the number one reason why we do this, is to give Chris this opportunity. 
The second reason is that this whole journey gives Chris a purpose. A purpose in life, something he can do the rest of his life, which is to make a difference for others like him. Mm. So that he can spend the rest of his life showing others like him that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. They can get their dreams and hopes, and they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. I could be inspiration to the kids. Um, when the kids see me, um, they come into their parents to open up me. And Chris's impact is just beginning. With every mile, lap, and hug, Chris defies all expectations put on those in the special needs community. But those closest still know how special he really is. Uh, when, I, when I look into this young man's arms and I, and I hug him, I feel God's presence. The kid is just so happy. And you know he walks into a room and he just lights a room up. Um, you can have all kinds of problems and all kinds of issues and he will just give you a hug and that joy just is amazing. I mean, if you don't have enough happiness and enough joy in your life, he'll give it to you. And um, I know Patty and I talk about that all the time. If we were to describe him with one word, it's joy. Though Chris is yet to run the final lap of his Ironman journey, he's been running a different race his whole life. And through every push-up, every sit-up, and every lap, that smile filled with joy never fades. Victor Pinto, WUFT News.